binary jazz Bi- binary jazz I, I don't yeah you can't we've, no <laughs> stop that yeah, right there <laughs> we've already we've already failed uh yeah so uh it's, this, this... it's rare that, that you you solicit a jesus out of me but that that did it <laughs> that was uh this is a podcast uh where we talk about some things uh usually there's a topic yeah. uh sometimes we avoid the topic sometimes we there's no topic at all uh and uh there's three of us you can find us online binary jazz at us we do things yeah. Look, here's the thing. I posited several episodes ago that uh, this is a show that is being used for torture in a future prison system. Is that what I said? It was something along those lines. It really? sounds much worse now. Yeah, it does. Um, and I don't mean it that way. I just mean that, like, culturally, the world has changed. Uh, idiocracy is what I'm thinking of, right? Uh, that's the future... I have to get, I have to figure out how to get rid of this meeting is being recorded. Modal, hold on. Okay. Um, <laughs> did you just click got it? <laughs> I did, but I had to like pivot all the way over here and hit the trackpad. I have this new mouse uh, that has a button on the side that lets me swap between computers, which is great. This listener, he just held up a, a computer mouse. <laughs> yeah, I have this new mouse. Name is Steven. <laughs> Cute tail. No, uh, and, but it's great if I, but it's not, I don't, I can't do it without looking at it. And I felt I needed to make my point and engage and I couldn't fiddle with the mouse. Now, obviously later on, I will exhibit my ADHD and uh, we'll be talking and I will be fiddling with all sorts of stuff as I listen. But at the moment, I felt like I should be paying attention as I was talking about uh, us being used to torture prisoners in the future. Um, don't you don't think of us very highly. It's that that's the problem is when I say it that way, I don't mean that it is a negative thing, as negative as it sounds. I mean like you don't you don't mean I expect the that world this podcast is used to torture prisoners as a negative thing. Right. I'm not sure why that's hard to swallow. Cool. <laughs> what I mean is like the world has changed and it's a different place. Uh, banter is not what it once was. I, I really am thinking of uh, idiocracy, honestly, and the way people communicate and just how much that's degraded in the future. And um, and also, um, I watched that movie again. Oh, good. And yeah, that's, that's, that's why it's on my mind. Um, man. Man. What, um, a, what a future in store for humanity. Well, speaking of torturing others um sure let's go there (laughs) we uh we did get sometimes we get mail uh not very often uh the most recent mail that we had gotten uh prior to uh this week i guess um was uh somebody had used our genre nader api uh to create a react app but more recent than that we got an email in russian And of course, I don't speak Russian, nor do I know what the Cyrillic characters say. So I went to trusty old uh, Google Translate, and I thought that I would share, uh, you know, because often we'll, when we get mail, since it's such a rare occasion, we, we you know, generally read it on the show. Uh, so I thought that I would share uh, this uh, valuable um, email that we got uh, translated uh, via Google Translate from Russian. You're gonna say something, Gary, or are you gonna? Okay, good. Uh, I mean, probably, but it wasn't important. It is as follows. Come on, a gorgeous thing. Interesting facts and events from all over the world. Something interesting facts, and also here interesting facts on various topics. That is the whole of the. Email Maybe gone. the best review we've gotten. <laughs> um, there was a link. Uh, to some Russian website that I'm sure as hell not going to go to uh, ever. <laughs> but uh, yeah, nor, I'll fire it up. nor will I uh, invite our listeners to go there. Um, Can you drop the link in uh, Slack? I would love to fire this up and see. Uh, sure, I will warn you. I, I guess I guess we should preempt this experiment 
by saying that uh, we at Binary Jazz do not condone the visiting of uh, Russian, random Russian spam links. Uh, and Gary is taking this upon himself and uh, we are not uh, responsible for whatever happens to his computer as a result of visiting this link. Just signs off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm replaced by like Max Headroom, but like the Russian version. <laughs> like Max. Ma 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 um, it's a uh, it's a link to an article in Russian. No surprise. Um, <laughs> published uh, sometime in 2019 at 4.23 p.m. I, it, it's, it seems pretty innocuous. Seems. All right, I guess I will, now my curiosity is peaked and I wanna see if there's like a way to translate oh, the page. I was going to suggest like maybe, maybe it ran some JavaScript in the background that I'm not aware of. I did oh. open it in like an incognito block everything <laughs> mode. Like, I don't trust you mode, but it didn't seem, I mean, of the spammy sites I visited in my lifetime, not that's even top right. 1000. Yeah, I guess that's accurate. Yeah, this isn't, this just seems like some travel blog, but let's say, let's see what it says. The image is great. It's like airplane, like, like flying straight towards you is, is a little intimidating. Detect language, please. Airline news. Boring. Uh, Did you all see, I love this. I love this and I hate this. I love, oh, let me just dig into it and then I'll explain all my thoughts on it. I have so many thoughts on so many things, but specifically Delta Airlines, um, oh, if you're yes. not vaccinated, there's yep. a $200 surcharge yep. added to your health insurance, which is like, oh, that's great. Like surface level, fantastic. Next level. Like, okay, this is capitalism enforcing people behaving in reasonable ways. I don't mm -hmm. want to go that far because there are actually, it's a very small percentage of people that are not vaccinated that have good reasons to not be vaccinated. However, uh, there are probably our employees at Delta that are going to have to pay the surcharge that can't be vaccinated. Most likely none of them fall in that bracket of under 12, but I don't know, it's Delta Airlines. Perhaps <laughs> they do employ children in other countries like for airline maintenance or airplane maintenance, because that's a thing that I found out when I used to travel a lot was that for maintenance, uh, uh, for like some of their long haul stuff, it's way cheaper to have mechanics in like um, the Philippines or Indonesia uh, work on the plane instead of in the States. And, you know, like, I, I don't know, this is like, a, this is sort of like the NASA, like, you know, flying astronauts to the moon, like, it's great until you realize that this thing is like maintained and built by the lowest bidder. Okay. As you like are, you know, 30,000 feet above the Arctic circle or whatever. I don't generally fly above the Arctic circle. So generally uh, the flights take, I mean, you, you might, you might not know it unless you're looking at the map pretty closely, like, but like flying to Asia out yeah. of Detroit, like, yeah, you like cut, you cut across. Yeah. Which I'm like, oh, awesome. If we crash, like we'll surely perish, which was true over the ocean anyway. It didn't matter. But in, in my head, the ocean seemed safer because I can swim. I don't know. I read, I read uh, one, of, one of the stupid things that showed up in my Quora digest, which I still read because sometimes there's just like random shit in there that is just fascinating that people are asking. I have no idea what those answering. two words mean together. Quora Digest. Quora is a website where people ask questions and other people answer them. And a digest is a collection of things sent in email form in this context. Uh, and in this case, uh, Quora sends me a bunch of uh, questions that have been answered that I might be interested in based on my behavior, I guess. Uh, anyway, they seem to think that I wanted to know, and I did actually want to know uh, what I should do because uh, this is totally going to happen, uh, if I jump out of an airplane uh, and my parachute fails, should I aim for the water? Uh, and the answer was, no, do not aim for the water. <laughs> First of all, there is a backup uh, parachute, which I didn't know about because I'm never going parachuting. 
uh, skydiving like ever. This is not knowledge I will ever find useful, but I found it interesting. Uh, there's a backup parachute uh, that apparently can be deployed in case of emergency. It's not as smooth. It's like as a rougher landing, whatever. Um, and you would want to deploy that, obviously, and then thank your rigor uh, by buying them a beer because they just saved your life. Um, but if in the, little... in the very minuscule chance that both okay. your parachutes fail, uh, what you are supposed to do uh, is aim for trees because hopefully you'll get caught by the trees and the parachutes because like you'll have pulled them out and they just fail to inf you know inflate or whatever so you, oh, hopefully you'll you'll yeah. you'll get caught in the trees and it will prevent you from slamming to the earth uh and then as you get close to the trees you curl up into a ball to protect you know your organs and whatever uh and that's that's what you would do if you would uh if you had jumped out of an airplane and uh, both parachutes failed uh so it really uh, it really assumes that you have the foresight oh yeah to to think things through in a moment sure. of adrenaline. Sure, sure. sure. Adrenaline. It, it said that the reason why you wouldn't want to aim for the water, besides the impact, which could probably kill you, uh, is because you would be likely, like, unless you are, unless you have, like, gear, you're going to get caught up in the, in the parachute. You're going to get, like, um, you're, if you survive, you know, you're going to drown. Yeah, yeah exactly. Awesome. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. So you don't want to, you don't yeah. want to aim for the water. I'm going to aim for the trees. So I guess the same he thing might be true for what? falling out of an airplane. But you're not falling out of the airplane. You're in the airplane. The airplane is crashing. crashing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to do if that's the case. Uh, I'll probably have to like ask that question on Quora. I'm sure somebody already has. Everybody has asked every question that's ever been thought. So. Um, so back to Delta. Sure. Airlines. So we've got not like very first couple levels. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. Yes. There's a whole deeper level there. There's like, two levels. Like that. The, the Delta is Delta like, Airlines is the all... one that is actually doing this. Well, th you're seeing during more and more the Delta and, variant. And and I think that and I think that something interesting is happening uh, very soon, uh, and that is the uh, cost sharing between insurance companies uh, for COVID treatment uh, ends uh, in the U.S. I should I should preface this all by saying this is uh, a culturally unique occurrence for living in um, a third world country with a huge military that has enough extra cash to, to, to handle PR to the rest of the world. Um, I, I, that's actually, I, God, I have so much to unpack here. Um, <laughs> watch the, that process the, unfold. Oh man, the, um, the, this is unique to the US because obviously our, uh, our healthcare system is an absolute joke and it's like everything else in the US and it's capitalist. So if you don't have money, you die. Um, uh, but so this cost sharing thing ends, uh, at the end of this month, which is just a couple days away. Uh, so I expect what we'll start seeing is announcements from insurance companies who will not cover, um, COVID, uh, treatment unless you've been vaccinated or have a medically valid reason for being unvaccinated. Although I say that second part, and I'm not actually sure that insurance companies will do that because that requires, um, actual human interaction and like a bit of a soul, which is just not what they're built on. Um, but so there's, there's that, like, so there's really like this whole capitalist system that's like, well, uh, it's going to be expensive to treat these people, which is why we're going to charge them $200. So there's another layer, right? So we're like three layers in the fourth layer is like, is, is like literally that, like it's capitalism saying like, oh, it's more profitable to have employees that have been trained and are not dying or in the hospital than it is to train new employees. That's it. That's, that's, that's the truth of the capitalist approach to treating COVID. And, and when I look at that and frame it that way, I, I feel a bit sick to my stomach, but then I also am like, yeah, I mean, like, it's very clear that, that the Republican party for all the posturing is literally the party of capitalism. That's it. Like the Republican party is like, you know, it, fuck your feelings. Is it profitable? Like that's it. That's the end, end of the day. That's what it comes down to. Um, yeah. So, uh, thanks Delta, I guess, for spinning it in the media to appear as though you're doing the right thing to increase shareholder value. And as a shareholder, I guess, thanks. Fuck. I, I didn't, I didn't ever not once interpret it as, uh, something that they were doing like as a, 
in any sense uh, way that they were doing the right thing, it immediately struck me as like, oh yeah, it's expensive to treat people with, with COVID. Uh, it was actually like when I read that headline, it was in conjunction with uh, a, I don't know, snippet that said that it costs on average $40,000 to treat somebody who's been hospitalized from, uh, by, from COVID. So like, you know, if you multiply that times the percentage of people that aren't going to get vaccinated and then like, yeah, 200 bucks a month per person is going to, you know, justify the cost it would it would take to continue to operate with those people not being vaccinated and likely getting sick and then likely being you know potentially being hospitalized and having to pay all that money yeah it just it was always it was it it never appeared to me like it was ever there was ever good intentions it was like accidental good intentions like maybe it'll force people to get vaccinated but not that wasn't the intent it was just like it was totally like about the bottom line hmm. So it was accidentally a good thing. But yeah, Delta doesn't give a shit about you. <laughs> so there goes those Delta sponsorships out the window. Yeah. Delta doesn't give a shit about you. you. <laughs> Delta Airlines. <laughs> Fly Delta. Um, I was said by a proud the, the uh, Delta Sky Miles holder. Flight. I was describing Canadian politics to my parents and... Um, it just got me thinking about how, I mean, any system, any political system is kind of weird, but like the fact that there are basically two parties in the States um, mm -hmm. and how problematic that is and how mm -hmm. it's like, but there's other ways. <laughs> but then also how confusing, I mean, like I'm still learning Canadian politics and how it all works. So I don't know if it's easier, but like, I'm just like, oh, but there's like more opinions in the, in the stew. Yeah. So here's a, yeah, I feel like, I feel like if I lived in England, I would have a better grasp on, on like British parliament and, and uh, MPs and how that system works. But like, I just hear yeah. the words and I see occasional things on TV uh where or or youtube videos or whatever where uh they're like yelling at each other and like i understand that like there is like the chamber is divided in a way such that or like when there's debates there is a division between the two people debating such that they are a sword length each apart so that they don't stab each other to death and that there are these like traditions from like carried over from hundreds of years and just seems really weird but i'm sure it makes sense to the people who live there and it would make sense to me if i lived there but like from the outside it's just like a weird dance of of uh political theater mm. you're gonna say something gary i was gonna say i i posted in slack i talked to a friend this morning and i was lamenting this dystopia and he countered and said like you know that's fine. But like, you're, you know, what are you whining about? Like, you're actually really well positioned for this. Like you're already homeschooling your kids. You work from home in an industry that's, you know, certainly not as impacted as other industries. And, uh, you know, I mean, you're, you're in a large enough house, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah. I mean, and, and totally valid points. And then he followed up by saying that, uh, he lives in, uh, Hillsborough County, which is uh, Tampa in Florida, uh, that there's not enough liquid oxygen available. Um, so the water smells because they're not able to properly treat it at the moment because of the increase in um, need for oxygen at the hospitals. And I'm like, if I wrote, like, he said this, and I'm like, I, it breaks a part of my brain, honestly, mm -hmm. uh, that, that, and it's back to capitalism, honestly, I'm, I've, I'm being this, it, it like we have this we have this whole concept and it's and we 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 looked at the Japanese and they have this idea of like just in time delivery and everything we went well okay that's great from a capitalist perspective you're not you're not paying to borrow money to purchase manufacturing equipment uh, because or manufacturing pieces because you're getting them just right when you need them blah 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 okay whatever um, and so because hospitals are for profit that same logic applies which means that there's no you know here's our regular demand for oxygen and. Perhaps it's increased over the last 18 months, but when the spike hit, there's no capability at the manufacturing level to provide more of it because, you know, they're only manufacturing the demand. And it's, it's like the whole thing's fucked. 
the whole thing is just absolutely fucked because it's it's it every everywhere along the way someone has to make a buck and because of that there's 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 no flexibility there's no uh it doesn't matter if customer service is forgiving and a caring person uh hmm. because the actual like machinery behind it can't accommodate um that at any kind of scale uh, it was and this is what we're i mean like this is this this entire like process of automation it's only going to get worse it can't get better it absolutely can't there's no way to make it better it's interesting the the, the uh, I, i'm just thinking you mentioned that customer service is great i was thinking about a recent john oliver where he was talking about um uh the uh Oh, what's it called? Where uh, the hacking uh, things that have happened recently, where they've held systems for ransom, and like many, mm -hmm. and like a lot of essentially these these, there aren't hackers anymore. Uh, there are like hacker consortiums that have developed a software that can just hold systems for ransom, and so like you as an individual, like I could you know purchase access to this software and uh you know hack into some like you know the electrical company uh you know and and hold their system for ransom and um they're gonna and they'll pay it because they don't have the technical expertise to to actually protect themselves but what what was interesting about that story uh was not about the technology because i already know that stuff and that's terrifying uh and oh, I, I didn't know necessarily that there's a software that people use <laughs> they don't need to actually be smart anymore <laughs> uh that's cool i should have assumed that that was the case because you know capitalist society uh but um no the the thing that was interesting was that these systems these third party systems that people pay act to to hack other people uh they have their own customer service both from the uh the hacker side like if you are the one that is demanding a ransom you have customer service about that you can interact with but also from the person being ransomed side so that they can learn about like how to create an account uh with coinbase or whatever to to send the bitcoin like they need to have some sort of customer service to walk them through that process because obviously these people are not technically savvy enough to like have for, have prepared their systems in the first place so obviously they're not going to know how to like you know send five million dollars in bitcoin to some you know hash so there's actually you know customer service and the customer service apparently is quite what quite nice they're very good at their job <laughs> and they are very uh, like, helpful apparently so so pursuant to that you remember the uh, ransomware attack on the uh ransomware the, is the word out the of the oil Yes. Yeah. yeah. The oil pipeline not too long ago. I think it was Pennsylvania or West yeah. Virginia, wherever the yeah. company was headquartered. Um, and so they shut down, they shut down production. Yep. They did not shut down production because that system was attacked by ransomware. They shut down production because the system attacked by ransomware was their billing system and they were concerned they weren't going to be able to <laughs> retroactively bill for what they shipped out. So the and this and this is, a, this is a, such a perfect fucking example of like the 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 capitalist imperative to protect the bottom line at all costs. Like, oh, sorry, we can't ship it. Like, it's not that we can't ship it. We physically can. We have staff available. It's cheaper to pay them to do nothing uh, because we're worried that we might not be able to bill you for it. And so rather than give it away for free and figure it out, you know, let's just not ship it in the meantime. It, it's like... Well, that means it was a very well-targeted attack. Like they could have targeted any, if they could have targeted any other system, but they targeted the billing system uh, because they knew nope. that the shipping. Company. It was easy to get into because yeah. the password on the router was the default password. Oh, geez. I'm sorry, on the VPN um, system uh, that they didn't actually use any longer. Their IT department had not disconnected from their network the you know, old VPN system with default password in place. <sighs> So use better passwords, change your passwords, people use or to don't, your authentication. don't use passwords at all and just refuse to create accounts. Well, that's that's uh, obviously the better solution, but that's not going to happen. Do you think so? We've we've re, we've 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 uh, we've talked about the show a lot, uh, not alive, alone. Yes, What's alive. That was that movie, right? Back sure. The soccer team that crashed in the Andes sure okay yes alone is the tv show 
Yes. About surviving in the wilderness. Yes. Do you think that there is just like an undercurrent of human interest in that as an alternative to like this, like just constant connected? I mean, because what do we do? We show up for work and we sit in front of our screens and then like, you know, optimistically, we, we spend the weekends and do things away from screens, but that, but when it's dark out and it's hot or cold outside and you're ready for bed, like we flip on the TV, which is connected to the internet. And the fascinating thing to me about informed by the advertisements that have been effective earlier in the day and blah, blah, blah. And it's just the fascinating thing to me about alone. And one of the things that, that continues to keep my interest is the points of failure like where somebody goes from believing that this is a thing that they can and will do for an extended period of time and the point at which they say, nope, I'm calling it. And sometimes that's like, you know, I injured myself. Um, mm -hmm. That is actually the rarest uh, occasion mm -hmm. of people leaving for like some sort of a medical evacuation. Um, the last season that we, that we just finished, which is season three, um, there were three people that were evacuated for medical reasons non-voluntarily. Basically, they had starved themselves to such a severe yeah. degree that if they had stayed any longer, it would start to have permanent effects. Yeah, organ shut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and that, was, that was probably the most depressing season to watch because you have all these people and they believe that they can do it and they're pushing themselves and whatever – but they're also killing themselves at the same time. And you can see it happening over time. You can see like how like this big guy becomes more and more gaunt. You can see how this person goes from being like a vibrant human being to essentially looking like the people that you walk by and try to ignore when you're in a big city who are panhandling on the street. Like, like it's, it's, it's fascinating. And, and yet like many of them are like, no, I can still do this. I still have time. I still, I can still do Like I've got one of them it, and, and it gives you these little blurbs, which are like sometimes very cleverly like poised, uh, like in, in relation to the things that are happening where um, like, like the producers are either trying to hint uh, that something might be like foreshadow something or like just give you sort of a, an explanation of what you're actually witnessing. And there's one, there was one point uh, where it like the dude was like talking about how he had dried 30 fish and they're in a bucket. And so if he rations that out and does one fish every two days, he can stay for another 60 days. Right. Um, and the little blurb popped up and talked about food hoarding and how food hoarding is a symptom of starvation. Like when you start like thinking about like hoarding food, it's because your body is, is starting to like, you know, shut down and, and, and react to that. I, I don't know, uh, to answer your question, I, I think there is a fascination uh, with, with like getting away from like all of this, um, but the interesting thing to me about the show is how many of them, when they actually are out in the wilderness, can't do it. Like just can't, like they're there. Like, so we're on, uh, we're on season four, which now they have teams. And the whole thing with the team is you have one person like uh, on the beach or whatever in, in the place where the camp is. And the other person helicoptered in somewhere else uh, and has to hike out to meet their, their partner. Um, so that's the whole first part. And it starts off with seven teams and we're into like day, I want to say eight and like three of those teams are already gone. Um, mm -hmm. And it's usually because the partner at base camp, something happened. They, they like one person like sprained their ankle. Uh, one person uh, freaked out because um they thought there was a bear, uh, you know, like usually it's it, like so far it's been just people just like you're, you're there and you just can't do it. You just can't, you just, just your brain just like you just freak out and just like, you're not thinking like you would think that like they've seen three, three seasons of the show that they know <laughs> what to expect, but, but no, you go out there and you're just like, you're on survival mode and you're just like, no, I can't do this. I'm not, I, I actually physically cannot do this. Um, and it's interesting that like there is that 
desire, like this idea that like, oh yeah, I can totally survive in the wilderness. I've done this type of stuff before. And then when you actually are, are out there and dealing with it in ways that people lived to, together before society existed, like people lived this way, maybe not like completely alone, but maybe completely alone sometimes. Uh, and they just like, we can't, we can't do it. We just can't do it. Like we're just not prepared, even even if we've been out and, and and done similar things, even if we've gone camping, like rough camping, even if we've like gone out and, and lived in the wilderness for a month or whatever, like it just it. Yeah, we can't. And I, I just it's 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 fascinating. It's fascinating how how prepared the people that, that are most prepared for this sort of thing really actually are. Yes, I absolutely would. Yeah. I mean, I looked sincerely after some trip back from Miami to Jacksonville and listened to a podcast about like the um, Mars environment that NASA has set up to see how people react living, you know, alone with delayed communication for a year. Like I absolutely did some research on that to see if I could qualify and like I would, uh, yeah, absolutely, 100%. Yes, I would put myself into that situation. And then like alone, like your survival rate is, is pretty high, right? Um, because of the medical checks. Uh, I mean, I guess there's still the likelihood you could be eaten by a predator or something, uh, or injure yourself so badly and you're so far away from the medical team that you know they can't get there in time. But generally, you know, survival rate's pretty high on that show. Uh, and I mean, nobody's you know, died yet. Yet. <laughs> yeah, the season it happens, their viewership's going to go through the roof, and I will have some kind of. <laughs> really pessimistic diatribe for you all. <laughs> well, this has been the, the most humanity. uplifting episode yet, I think. Of yeah, Ninja. yeah. I know, I feel like we should like finish with like a hug and a song together. And um, I didn't mean to like bring it as such a downer, but I, I don't know, like this, we're, we're, we're 18 months into this dystopian future that like, you know, the some dystopian of the best writers, yeah. it's, yeah. Yeah, some of the best writers in the world didn't, see this one and uh and like and like imagine what fiction will look like in five years as people parse this and it becomes like part of their conscious and uh and then informs the way they write future dystopian novels like you're gonna have to really bring your game for people to believe it you, you know? know the way like kids there's a there is a thread uh on twitter recently that was like um, post, uh, share your, your age and where you grew up and whether shooter drills were a thing when you were in school. Shooter drills were not a thing when I was in school. Shooting, school shootings weren't a thing when I was in school. Um, but now it's so commonplace that when it happens, like I saw a, a clip of a video that was like a girl that was like, um, yeah, I was ready for it because I'd been through uh, this sort of thing before and I knew what to expect. And like, you know, like the kids are so, I don't know, desensitized to the concept of an active shooter in their school that they like are like, they have skills now to deal mm -hmm. with that eventuality. Um, and that it is something that is being drilled into them the same way that earthquake drills were drilled into me uh, when I was in school. Um, and that's, 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 the present, that's the present that we live in now. So the present that we will live in in the future is those kids, all kids, are now going to be familiar with and experienced with what happens when there is a global pandemic? And that's going to be part of the cultural consciousness, the same way that school shootings have become a part of the cultural consciousness. So like, it's not even just fiction, it's gonna be like everything. Like, what is this, what, is, what are these kids that are like in you know, grade school now, like what, what is their experience and their perception of the world going to be when they are like our you know, new politicians and leaders and senators and presidents and like like this is a fascinating like i don't know tangent that we have like just just we're going down uh that is that is uh yeah it's it's i i, I don't know it's fascinating it's it's uh it's only normal because because it's 
it's back to the capitalist mandate, right? Like our position in the United States as being the world's arm dealer, arms dealer is that we have to have a tacit acceptance of firearms. And one mm. of the results is that if everyone can have firearms, well, there's going to be some bad shootings. And that occasionally means kids are going to die. Bad but shootings as opposed to good that, shootings. I, I mean, that, yeah. I mean, yeah. Like that's, yes. Because the part of the deal being the arms dealer is like, clearly there have to be good shootings because it has to justify selling the fire for the firearms to exist, right? It's, it's so fucked up. We, I, uh, I had this massive argument with my dad years ago. Um, I guess not that long ago, probably 20, probably 2015, uh, when it wasn't, um, <laughs> when it wasn't apparent that Trump was going to be the nominee for the Republican mm. party before the world turned absolutely up the fuck side down. Um, and I had this, this, like, I mean, shouting argument, like, like, uh, dad, you don't understand. Like, you know, like your kids are going to school or your grandkids are going to school and we have live shooter drills. That means that a teacher is talking to them about what to do if someone with a gun comes into school. Do you understand that? Like, fuck the second amendment. That's ridiculous. Why are we okay with this? Like, why, why is anyone okay? Why does anyone here like, oh, shooter drill is drill school. Why is, why is, why are people's reactions? Like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, absolutely not. Why aren't we like Australia? Like, mm -hmm. no, nope, nope, nope. Firearms can't be in the wild. Fine. Fix it. And the reason is because it's not profitable. I mean, it's like, you know, the whole conversation about billionaires paying taxes, like whatever, like, you know, like let, let's say, let's sell some attack jets to, to some country when we're done with them. Like there's the, where the money is, you know, it's just, it's, it's so the, the rot is so deep. It, uh, Yes, thank you for listening to this episode. The rot is so deep is the new is the episode title. The rot is so deep. <sighs> where and, and like there's there's no there's no benefit to looking back and saying where did it happen, right? But like you know, looking forward, like where are the opportunities to like put a foot down and be like, no, we've gone far enough. Um, I mean, because it like school shootings. Okay. Well, when it was students shooting the school, like that wasn't enough. When it was people coming into the school and shooting the school, that was enough. When it was people coming and shooting at elementary schools, that wasn't enough. Like, you know, where, where is the line where, where it's enough? You know, I, I don't know that that ship may have set sail, but there's going to be a time where it's like, you know, is it safe to go to the D uh, there's, or, there's a, you know, there's a, there's an Overton window thing there uh, that, that I don't know where that window shifts over into the guns are bad section when it's constantly being counterbalanced by like NRA propaganda. Um, like that's, that's the problem, you know, like as, much, inherently, as much as that stuff comes out, like you would think you would assume, Oh, rational people will look at this and say guns are bad. And then like, they'll come in and say, but the only way to protect against guns is by with more guns uh and uh and i don't know yes and and how do you how do you how do you deal with that oh we need more policing obviously because obviously yeah the policing is the problem we... and, and police need to be behavioral scientists uh as well as uh law enforcement as well as uh like enforcers of uh public policy and yeah man The good news is there's another episode of, of binary this, jazz next week. That's the good news. <laughs> and we'll have a better topic. Yeah, I was really reaching. No, the good news is, is honestly, in spite of all this, there are people that are, that are able to go out there and like make beautiful art. And there are conversations we can have that don't include this kind of ridiculousness. And there are uh, children in the world that have fascination and there are animals and plants growing and like, uh, in some places, it's safe to even breathe the air. Um, Not here. <laughs> but some... Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.